Hello everyone, in this lecture we're going to be learning how to draw the arrows on an acid-base reaction. In addition to that, we will also talk about how to predict the equilibriums of those acid-base reactions. Another way of saying if those reactions are going to be product favored or reactant favored, we'll talk about how to determine that. Just as a quick refresher about the definition of your bronze lori acid base and your Lewis acid base, remember your bronze lori acid is a proton donor or any chemical that gives an H plus and then bases are going to be the proton acceptor and in addition to that your Lewis acid is going to be an electron pair receptor and your base is going to be an electron pair donor. Turns out the base for both of those guys, uh, the bronze lori base and your Lewis acid uh, Lewis base is actually going to be the same thing because if a base is accepting a proton it must have a lone pair of electrons and that, that's exactly the definition of the Lewis space the anything that give away its lone pair of electrons or electron pair now when it comes to drawing draw, uh, the mechanisms the there's few things you always want to keep in mind and that's will they will stay with you for the rest of the organic chemistry and uh, your pattern doesn't really change for the most part you always draw the arrow where you're showing the flow of electron density or the movement of the electrons and another way of saying your arrow is always going to start where you have the most electron dense region and those electron dense regions going to be something like a lone pair a negative charge or even a pi bond and those uh, where the arrow is going to be pointed toward they're going to be pointed toward where you have an electron deficient region and your electron deficient region is going to be you could have like in a proton or maybe in a cation or atom with an incomplete octet those are going to be your loose acids or you can also even have a center that's partially positive so all those are electron deficient and that's where your arrow is always going to be pointed toward now when you're drawing the mechanisms for these uh, bronson lori acid base it will have two arrows so let's figure out uh, how we're going to be drawing those arrows and before we actually do that you want to make sure you're able to identify what your acid and bases are in addition to the conjugate acid bases in this complete reaction so if i call this suppose uh, uh, one here two here three here and four here just for the sake of uh, calling those easily during the lecture let's figure out whether one or two are going to be the acid or bases and uh, one of the ways you can always do so in a given reaction pair those up with what it makes on the other side so this chemical one what it's turned into on the product side it turns into a three and figure out what the difference is going to be between one and three going from a one to three all we're really doing is losing this proton so this proton is not there on three anymore so as a result this is going to be acting as a proton donor so since it's a proton donor it's going to be acting as an acid now we do the same thing for this second chemical which is water here see what water is making on the other side so just pair those up here so going from the water onto this product four or another way of saying going from chemical two to chemical four here we have this addition of the proton here as a result this two must be acting as a proton acceptor so since it's acting as a proton acceptor it must be the base in this particular reaction now what's happening once you have made those products how are those products going to be treated so remember anytime an acid lose the proton what it makes on the other side after losing the proton acid makes the conjugate base so this compound three that's resulted from the acid is going to be your conjugate base and then this chemical four here after gaining the proton for, uh, from the base two here it's going to be acting as your conjugate acid so that's one thing you want you want to make sure you are able to do figure out your acid bases and the conjugate acids 
and conjugate bases in a given reaction. Now, how does the mechanism really work? So like I said, there are going to be two arrows involving in this acid bronson lowry acid base reactions. Your arrow is going to start from your electron dense region, which is going to be the base. So your electron dense region is going to be right here. And uh, this electron dense region is going to be going in. So let me change the color there. It's going to be going in to grab the proton here. And that's your one arrow going from the electron dense region to the electron deficient region, which is going to be the hydrogen here. And then it's accepting the proton. And the proton is going to go away as an H plus. As a result, the bond between the oxygen and the hydrogen here is going to break. And that bond is going to take its electron onto the oxygen. So those are the two arrows you're always going to be seeing in the mechanism of an bronson lowry acid. Now, in terms of predicting the equilibrium, where the equilibrium is going to be, like whether it's going to be shifted to the right side or to the left side, you can predict that by looking at the pKa values of the acids. So in a given reaction, you figure out what chemicals are acting as an acid. So in this particular case, you know this first one is an acid. So we need to go back and look up the pKa of that. And then this chemical 4 is going to be your conjugate acid. So that's another acid in this here. And figure out what the pKa is going to be. And you can just look those up in the table. The pKa of acidic acid is about 4.74. And then the pKa of this conjugate acid, this is also called hydronium, is about negative 1.74. Now, you're always going to be making the weaker acid from the stronger acid. So out of those two acids that you just figured out and you just wrote down the pKa values, figure out who's going to be a weaker acid and who's going to be a stronger acid. So I know higher the pKa, weaker the acid. So this is going to be a weak acid, or you can say a weaker acid, and this is going to be a stronger acid. So your equilibrium always going to be going from the stronger acid to the weaker acid. So in this particular case, this equilibrium will be shifted to the left. That's one way of writing it. The other way of writing it, they may have the arrow going to the right side kind of made smaller, like this one right there. So you have a bigger arrow going to the left side. So that tells you that it's in a reactant favored or it's shifted to the left side. Let's look at this next one. So it's probably going to be a good idea if you can pause the session and figure out uh, the acid bases and the arrows on this one. And if I focus on what's being made here, so starting from this reactant here, this chemical going on to make that, uh, I can call this one and call this two, three, four. So one after losing the proton is making three here. So if it's losing this particular proton here, that means it's acting as an acid. And then as a result, what we got on the other side, that three is going to be your conjugate base. So whatever the acid makes on the other side is going to be your conjugate base. The OH minus, which is your second chemical here, it's going on to make the water and it's doing so by gaining the proton here. So since it's gaining the proton, this OH minus is going to be acting as the base. And what it makes on the other side is going to be your conjugate acid. Okay, so those are your acid-base pairs. Now figure out how the arrow is going to look like. So remember, since it's in a bronson lowry acid base, we're going to have two arrows. So one arrow is going to be going from the base onto the proton because the, it's, uh, the base is going to be a proton acceptor. So it grabs that proton. And then your second arrow is going to be the breaking between the carbon and hydrogen here. And that bond is going to be going on to the hydrogen. So this arrow also points uh, where the electron density is going to be after breaking this uh, bond here which way your equilibrium is going to be shifted. So you will figure out where your pKa values are. So your pKa for this particular compound, you can look it up in the, uh, in the table, it's going to be around 9 or 10. And then the pKa of your conjugate acid, which is actually water, the water's pKa is about 15.7. 
So you, the water is going to be your weaker acid here. And your left side is going to be your stronger acid. So like I said, you're always going to be making your stronger, you're always going to be making your weaker acid. So this is going to be shifted to the right. So when I try to raise a part of it, I can make this left arrow to be shorter. Okay, let's look at this next one. So I'll try to do this one quickly. Now, sometimes you may not have the proton shown, like in this next one, but then you have to predict where the proton is being removed. So in this particular case, we have one, two, three, four. So this one is making this chemical three, and then see what's the changes being happening here. We can clearly see here that this position right here gets the negative charge. That means it must be losing the proton here. So there is an, a proton right there that's being lost. So it's not very, it's not shown here because you now you have to come in in the habit of figuring out which particular proton is being lost here. And then if you're losing the proton here, this is going to be acting as your acid. And this next one is going to be your base in that case. The three, since it comes from the acid, is going to be your conjugate base. And the four is going to be your uh, conjugate acid. As far as the error go, we can clearly see that uh, the electron dense region in the base is going to be the negative charge on the nitrogen or the lone pairs on the nitrogen. As a result, you're going to have the lone pair on the nitrogen grabbing the proton. So you got to make sure you show the position, the starting of the arrow from the lone pairs and the head of the arrow onto the hydrogen. You don't want to be showing it on some random places on the molecule. It has to be very specific. You start from the lone pairs and it grabs the proton and as a result this bond between the carbon this bond right there between the carbon and hydrogen is going to break and when it breaks the electron density goes on to the carbon which way it's going to be shifted well figure out the pkas of these guys the pka of this acid is roughly going to be somewhere around 19 to 20 and then the pka of your conjugate acid it's in a amine so uh, the approximate range for that is going to be anywhere around 37, 38. So I'll say 38. So you can clearly see that this is your weaker acid because you have higher pKa. So since it's a weaker acid, this reaction is going to be shifted to the right side. So it can go ahead and draw the right arrow to be bigger and the left arrow to be the smaller in that case. Okay, what about this next one? Here you have to actually predict how the product is going to look like and how your reaction, uh, which one's going to be the acid and the base here. So we can clearly see here we got a positive charge on the second molecule. So I can call this one here and call this two here. And then we know there is a lone pair of electrons on that uh, oxygen there. Uh, so the only thing that you can possibly do here is having this oxygen going on to that hydrogen grabbing the proton and then restoring the electron density of that oxygen there that's off the hydronium ion so this second one is going to be your acid because that's your proton donor so when that happens what it's going to make i can probably just copy this down here just for the sake of time so when that happens, we're going to get a hydrogen here. So with a positive charge, obviously use one of these uh, electron pairs to grab that proton. So this gets a positive charge. And then plus, you're going to be making a water here. So I know this 2 is going to be my acid, this 1 is going to be your base in that particular case because it's a proton acceptor. What the base is going to make on the other side is going to be your conjugate acid. So this is your conjugate acid here. And this is going to be your conjugate base. I know the pKa, so you can go back and look up uh, the table for the pKa values. The pKa for hydronium ion is going to be roughly negative 1.7 and the pKa of this conjugate is going to be your protonated ketone 
is roughly negative 6.2 or somewhere around 6 you can say. Uh, so we can clearly see that we have a weaker acid on the left side. So this is your weaker acid and this is your stronger acid. And as a result, we're going to be making a weak acid. So your equilibrium will be shifted on to the left side here. And if I want to draw in terms of the arrow, I can make this top arrow to be a little bit shorter, saying, telling that uh, it's in a reactant favored a reaction. So the take home message here, as far as when you're drawing the arrows for a loose, uh, for the bronson laurie acid base, you're going to have two arrows. One arrow is going to be starting from the base, and the other arrow is going to be showing the, the bond broken between the hydrogen and whatever atom it's attached to it. And then the second take home message here is going to be how would you predict the equilibrium? The equilibrium always going to favor the side that has going to have the weaker acid. So, another way of saying it's always going to favor the side that has higher pKa value because higher pKa value reflects weaker acid. If for some reason you can't tell, if you don't know the pKa values, then you're going to have to rely on the stability of the base. And that's something qualitative. And that's when you learn that RU effect, the atom effect, resonance, inductive, and orbital effect. If you, can't, if you don't know the pKa values, you can also tell which way the equilibrium is going to shift based on the stability of the base. Or another way of saying, whichever side has the weak base or the stable base, that's where your equilibrium is going to shift. Always focus on the acidity first, and if you can't tell based on the acidity, that's when you have to look at the stability of your base. Uh, we can focus on the conjugate base, and you can also focus on the base on the left side. When it comes down to the mechanism of Lewis acid base, it's going to have only one arrow. So think of these two examples I got here. So I have this amine here. So remember there is going to be a lone pair on that nitrogen. And I, this, I got this BH3 molecule. So who is your loose acid and who's your loose base here? It's going to be a good idea to figure that out on your own. So remember your boron compound has an incomplete octet. So this is going to be in a loose acid. And your amine, since it's got the lone pair that can be donated easily, is going to be a loose base. So when it comes to drawing the arrow, the, uh, the basic foundation still stays the same. Your arrow is going to start where your electron dense region is, which is going to be the nitrogen, and it's going to point toward the boron, which is your electron deficient region in this case, and that's because boron has an incomplete octant. So when, what do you make on the, at the end of the day? Well, you have a new bond that's going to be between the nitrogen and the boron, and now nitrogen has four bond mates as a result gets a positive charge and then this boron again got four bond mates and when you calculate the formal charge it's going to have a negative charge on it negative one formal charge on it uh, your charge must be conserved when you're going from the reactants to the products so on the reactants overall there is a zero charge but on the product even though you have two atoms with the charges but your net charge still going to be zero because you got a one positive one one negative in there well let's look at this next one here so and then this next one what's going on we got uh, aluminum chloride so remember your aluminum chloride is going to be your loose acid that's one of the examples and this chlorine in this particular case is going to be acting as a loose base and we can clearly see all those electrons on those chlorine atoms in there so how the arrow is going to look like well, it's a good idea if you can draw that on your own. So it's going to point toward the aluminum here. So as a result, this is how it's going to look like at the end of the day. So one of the lone pairs is used from the chlorine to make a bond with the aluminum. So as a result, this chlorine is going to get a positive charge and this aluminum will get a negative charge and your net charge will stay, still stays zero at the end of the day.